The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Cowboys Storylines with Nick Eatman. What is up? It is time for another Cowboys Storyline. I'm Nick Eatman, and we are here live in Frisco, Texas. And the Cowboys are we're getting closer and closer to the start of the season. This is the, the last time we're going to be doing a, a, this show at this time here, I think, at, at 11 a.m. Uh, Central Time. We're moving to a 10 a.m. starting on Tuesday, and Tuesday is officially game week. There will not be shows on uh, Monday for Labor Day. Uh, there'll be people in the building working. we got uh, practice going on, and, and we'll be able to cover that. But as far as shows, we'll, the shows will take a holiday. Uh, we'll get back on Tuesday, and then everybody's time slot. Is going, we're going daily at this point. It's been nice to kind of ramp it up ramp it up just like the players do for preseason you kind of get it going a little bit you don't you don't you're not here every day every other day of course Chris Beam, our producer, has been doing it every day, but not not the seven shows or eight shows or one at once. Uh, that hits on Tuesday, and uh, I'll be going at 10 a.m. 30 minutes ish. We'll go 30, but we might go a little bit more on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, we've got, we'll, we'll be getting out for uh, Mike McCarthy's um, press conference. But Mondays and Tuesdays after games, and as we kind of turn the page to the next game, we, we may go a little bit longer. Uh, we'll see how, how that goes. But um, as far as, far as storylines... It's, it's really all about the same. The roster is kind of settled into uh, what it is at, at this point. No no big surprises here in the last uh, 24 hours or so. So this looks like a, what it's going to be um, and heading into the, the Giants game. I think Brandon Aubrey will be the kicker. Um, I think the offensive line, they, they added uh, Sean Harlow, a, a center, uh, for the practice squad. He may or may not be ready for the first game. I, I would bet Br- Brock Hoffman is the better choice there to move up for game day. But what you do is you have a couple of centers there, so that's that's probably six weeks worth of you know three each of, of moving these guys up, and then at, at that point you know you kind of see what happens. So all right, we're gonna go to the phone lines. Last show was incredible. We had eight calls last show. It was it was amazing, a lot of fun. That's really what this show is all about. When I can interact with you guys, uh, whether it be the text line or the calls, I'm gonna throw the number out there: one eight 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 five five two two nine seven. That's the phone line. The text line, 817-290-3298. And I believe we have a caller right now, Chris from Mississippi on the line. Chris, what's up? How you doing, Nick? I'm great, man. How are you? Hey, man, first thing is I got a, I got an apology for you. Uh-oh. And, and then I've also got a comment that I would like to hear your feedback on. First okay. thing is I have to say when I first started listening to Cowboys podcast, the first one I ever listened to was the break, and I almost quit listening. I thought it was you and David at first when I first started listening, and then I realized it was Mr. Rigid, David. I mean, not not David, but Mr. Rigid, Derek, making everything kind of quirky for me. I just, I don't know. Okay. It's just something about how he does stuff. But um. Well, that's my boss, so I'm not going. I'm not going with you on yeah, that. I but uh, I know you can't say no. anything. I can. No, no. I wanted to also say thank you for Mr. Chris Bean for being our MVP. We appreciate no all doubt. you do. Agreed. And so when. You remember a couple years back when everybody like Ambar, Derek, and all these other people were saying, oh, we need Dak to be more aggressive. We need Dak to be more aggressive. If I remember right, you and Dave kept telling them, well, if you get more aggressive, he's going to throw more picks. He's not going to be as safe. So I was actually calling to call out some people that keep saying, oh, well, we need Dak to be more than a bus driver. Well, if you say that, then you cannot complain about the picks that he throws. That's because that's the only way he's going to be more than a bus driver or just a good, safe quarterback, which is what we need. Right. And that's just my opinion. Thank you for the great show. Appreciate Thank it. You. Have a good day. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, appreciate the call. Um, you know, those are my teammates too. So you know, they all have opinions. We all we all have have opinions, and I'm sure there's, there's more to it than just saying be more aggressive and all that. Sometimes, sometimes the be more aggressive is also running the ball too. But you're right about that. When you throw more passes, you're going to get more yards, more touchdowns, and probably more interceptions. I always say the fact that, and I, I know it's changed then, but I do remember when Brett Favre was the leader 
in touchdown throws. He also was the leader in interceptions. Um, I think Babe Ruth had a lot of strikeouts, but of course he had a lot of, a lot of home runs. That's the nature of it. That's what happens. Um, as for being more aggressive, being a bus driver, all that stuff, you know, to me it comes down to what's the best thing that you do. If you have a great running back, if you if you have a great ground game, then yeah, being a bus driver is probably really important. Don't make mistakes. If, if the teams are counting on you to go make the plays and do all the things that you need to do, then certainly um, you're going to have to be more aggressive at times. And with that comes a little bit more interceptions. Go back to that first year of Dak, rookie year, 2016, really didn't throw a lot of picks. They, they were running the ball. I mean, Zeke was was doing his thing, and and it, it was it was a great offense there. Jason Witten was 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 kind of a security blanket. So and Dak didn't have to do a lot of forcing, and he didn't you know didn't throw a lot of interceptions. But as time has gone on, and they've needed him to be more of of that playmaker. Sometimes you you make plays for both teams. You, you it it happens. But you're right. The, the, the Cowboys need to get to the point where they can give him some help where he doesn't have to do everything. All right, we're going to go back to the phone line again. We've got Ernesto from Washington State. Washington State. What's up, man? Hey, uh, just a quick question. You've been doing this for a long time. you watched a lot of different, different offensive coordinators with the Cowboys. I'm just wondering, what do you expect to see different week one against the Giants under Brian Schottenheimer as opposed to what we've been seeing and years pass from Kellen Moore and guys like that, like Jason Garrett, that type of style offense. I'm gonna, I'm hang gonna up and just hold on before you hang up. I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you a follow up to, to your question. What do you want to see more? What 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 do you like to see? What, what what do you think that that you would like to see differently out of this offense? So something that I'm kind of looking for is that situational. Well, I know this is gonna tie into Mike McCarthy's play calling, but I I really want to see more options for like. The uh, the play action. I know we did some play action under um, Kellen Moore, and it was pretty spotty. But I'm just looking for something a little like just let Dak kind of go a little bit. Let let him do what he's comfortable with. And I could be wrong here, but I'm wondering like if under Kellen it was like okay, this is my system. This is what the players are going to do. I'm wondering if under Schottenheimer, if he's going to put in things that he knows that Dak likes. He knows yeah. that okay, Dak likes to do this or that. I'm going to implement that in the offense and let McCarthy call that. Yeah, and that's that's always key. And, and we pre- appreciate the call there. Thank you. And I'm glad you could kind of throw that part in there too because cause I, that's what I'm I'm interested to see. I mean, I have opinions, but I, I want to hear y'all's opinions as well. I mean, the, the, there was something behind the question there about what do we want to see. And and um, for me, it, it's um, – it's. I want to see them utilize their their speed. Um, and 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 I love what I've seen in, in training camp as far as the width of the of the field and using all of it. Um, they they really do a nice job of kind of getting these guys in space. That was my biggest thing about last season when they lost to the 49ers is they did not have enough playmakers. They just couldn't compete with that aggressive defense in San Francisco. It was just CD at the end of the game, and they, they he did a nice job, but they doubled him, and there was no other running back threat. And now with the speed, I think Cooks adds a lot. I think Gallup is better than he was. Tolbert can maybe be that guy. You've got Pollard. You've got Deuce. Um, I, I think that you've got Turpin. I don't want to forget him. I think Turpin's speed can really help. So that's what I want to see is I want to see them get the ball in space and, and you know easy, quick throws in the flat and see if these guys can go make plays on their own because if they can do that, that'll open up the middle and opens up the running game. Back to the calls. We got, another, we got Tim in Dallas. What's up? Nick. How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. I, for a second, I thought it might be my dad. My dad, he lives in Dallas, and his name's Tim. So I was just like, oh, what? what a, yeah, but I don't think so. What's up, you though? Know, uh, funny story. Before I get to my question about Hunter Lipke, I was at the uh, Arkansas-Texas game in 2021 in Fayetteville. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a Texas grad. Oh, sorry. And I kind of thought, I wonder. <laughs> yeah, I know it's been terrible <laughs> the last decade and a half. But I kind of thought, I wonder if Nick's here. So we were walking around the tailgates, and then we are going to head to the game. And funny enough, I ran into Jerry, Steven, and Shy, And yep. they saw me with my Texas shirt on. They kind of gave me a frown. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I was uh, I was there, and uh, I think I have a picture on Twitter or something that, that, that um, I'm on the field. 
and the with the other fans that stormed the field there, and it was like a lot of people were asking, you know, what what what's your thoughts? And I was like, here's the picture, just to tell you how how great it is, uh, and, and what my feeling is like. That was one of my favorite games of all time, uh, be, just because you know, and, and it's and it's nothing against. Texas, I have, I really don't have disrespect for Texas. Of course, you know, I got people here in the in the in the building, big Longhorn fans. But uh, I, I think it's more of a credit to them and the university when you beat Texas. Uh, you know, it's always a big deal, regardless oh. if they're at the top or not. So that was a great I, one for I, me. I, I, I love that it's back. I've gone down, yeah. you know, memory lane. The Randy Peschel catch against Arkansas in '69. You know, Coach Broyles against. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coach Royal. I mean, it, it, it's a fantastic robbery, and, and I think we're all just blessed be to see it again in our lifetime be renewed. Um, and I knew Texas was in trouble, not to belabor the point or go off on a tangent, but I knew Texas was in trouble because we got there Friday morning and we hung around campus, and then Friday nights, people were just off the rails. The <laughs> pep rallies, I was like, oh my God, Texas just walked into a war zone. Yeah. And sure enough, we got, oh my gosh. It was a bad. tough one. It was, yeah. But it'll be it'll be fun. That that was that was a fun experience for me. I, I bet so. Well, my question though for the Cowboys and for you, um, I know McCarthy has had experience using a fullback in the past. I think John Kuhn mm-hmm. from Green Bay is a prime example. He was a fan favorite, but he was also, I think, he was quite the utility. And I'm just wondering. I know you know Hunter Lipke is this kid from North Dakota State, unheralded, but he's kind of a cult hero. Mm-hmm. I mean, is he just a preseason kind of flame, or do you think he has a role with this team? Well, I think I I don't think you keep. Uh, thanks for the call. Appreciate it, and, and good luck to your your teams uh, this uh, this week. Um, we need it. We need, yeah. Well, maybe not against Rice, but but you will. You know, you'll definitely need it going into the SEC. <laughs> All right. Um, going back to the, the fullback question, I don't think they keep players on the roster for just preseason flashes and 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 things like that i think that there is a role that they see for him and um and and i think it's very similar to what what you mentioned about coon in green bay a, a, a utility guy he'll he'll grow into that a little bit more um what i was told about him is really smart player and so when when it starts there when you got a guy that knows knows what we're doing here, knows you know how how to play special teams, knows the offense, understands different positions, smart enough to pick up other spots on the field, then that he'll continue to grow. So I think there's a role for him. Um, I was a little surprised that he made the team. I was actually surprised because he hadn't done a whole lot before that. Even the Seattle game, he was kind of like hard to stay on his feet. He just he just didn't seem like he really was ready for it. Had a nice game in, in the preseason finale. And I think that they have a vision for him. So I think it's more than just what they've seen. It's more about what they think he can do. Um, I'm, I'm sticking with the calls. If I hear a call in my ear, I'm going to the calls. So I know the text lines are there. We're going to get to it. But I'm going to keep the, the, the calls and the lines open. So we've got uh, Lex in Pennsylvania. What's up, Lex? What's going on, Nick? Uh, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. The great. Um, I just wanted to know um, who on the defense, other than your normal names, Micah, Diggs, um, who on the defense needs to step up a lot for our defense to take the next level? That's that's basically. All right. Um, I, I think I think guys that could step up a lot. Um, I you know, and he wasn't here last year, so it's hard to say step up. But but Stephon Gilmore, the better that he is, the better Diggs is going to be. And so the guys you just mentioned. You know, you you you're, you're passing them, right? Diggs, Micah, it's the guys on the other side. If they can do what they need to do, if Gilmore can be the corner that they expect him to be, if Tank Lawrence, Dorrance, Armstrong, those guys can rush from the other side and do what they need to do, that's only going to allow the the two that you mentioned to be better and be all world like we think they're going to be. Um, and so that's that's the key for me. And also the middle, inside guys, Osa, um, Hankins, Mozzie Smith, you can shore that up. They couldn't beat the Eagles in that game in Philly last year because they couldn't stop the run. Yeah, Micah was doing his thing from the outside, but they kind of controlled that and they could not stop the run. Get that shored up. There's not a football game tonight in anywhere in the United States on Friday night that if they the, the team doesn't stop the run, they're probably not going to win. That's that's Friday night high school, that's tomorrow's college games, and that's every Sunday as well. You have to stop the middle. So I would say the guys opposite of your stars and also the middle 
inside. Before we take a break, we'll go one more phone call here before we're going to take our first break. Uh, who we got on the line? We got Jake in South Lake. What's up? What's up, Nick? How you doing today, man? I'm, I'm, Happy Friday. You, thank you. Happy Friday to you as well. Hey, I just wanted to get your thoughts on a few matchups next week that you're most looking forward to. Yes. We're talking, and that we're talking matchups. You, I love it. We're talking it matchups. Be- we're close <laughs> enough to talk matchups. I love it. Sorry, go ahead. Well, well, whether you're excited or whether it brings you some anxiety, I mean, I'm, I'm personally looking forward to Lawrence versus Martin. That's always a good matchup. Um, I'm also really interested to see what CD and Brandon Cooks do, those corners. Adoree Jackson, uh, Deontay Banks. I just want to get an idea. I'm a little worried uh, uh, at linebacker, obviously. Uh, Saquon's going to be a hell of a matchup there, but I just want to get your idea of you know, one yeah. matchup that you're really looking forward to watching and one that kind of makes you a little nervous. I'll hang up and let you know. Uh, thank you for the call. Um, you know, it's I, I I'm not gonna lie, I haven't got I haven't turned it straight to the Giants just yet. Um, as far you know, you kind of know what they have a little bit. Um, and, and all and always kind of know what type type of game it's going to be. And and you know, it's it's a it's a cop out answer, but it's always one of the right answers is right there in the center. Like you, like you mentioned, uh, Dexter Lawrence, uh, how, he's a great player. He really is, and 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 he can kind of control things in the in the middle for them. Um, you know, having Zach Martin obviously helps, and Tyler Biotish and Tyler Smith. Um, I would like to see what 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 you know they can do on the interior there with that push. So um, that's kind of where it, where to be where it'll start. Um, you you talked about the linebackers. You know, let's not forget Daniel Jones. It can be elusive, and and it's not just Barkley. Daniel Jones can do some things um, with with his feet, and and that has that has plagued the Cowboys the last few years. Sometimes when you're over uh, aggressive, it creates running lanes, and that's where I think that that you know. Third and nine, you, you think you're about to get off the field, and then you let the quarterback run for 15 yards, and they move the sticks. And so that that right there, I, I think, is is keeping containment on Daniel Jones, uh, not just worried about the weapons that they have because he can be a weapon with his legs as well. And then obviously uh, the middle uh, and the inside is, is always going to be a key, and I think it, it definitely will be against the Giants' aggressive defense. All right, we're going to take a break here on Cowboys Storyline. We'll be right back. We're going to try to get some of these text messages and more phone calls. Be right back. Fall is here, and that means football is back, bringing all the delicious game day foods with it. As you prep for all the big games, tailgates, and watch parties, let Yokiero be your one-stop destination for all things home gating. Yokiero's fresh, flavorful, ready-to-serve guacamole made with real Hass avocados will score taste bud touchdowns as you cheer on the Cowboys. Yokiero's wide range of mouth-watering and versatile products can be found in your local grocery store's produce or deli section. Grab some today. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with pregame sideline access and photo ops with current players, cheerleaders, and cowboy legends. You want to stay at a team hotel, attend the best tailgate party in Texas, tour the star, and talk X's and O's with me, Everson Walls? With Star Sports Tours, you can. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. SeatGeek has your back no matter what kind of Cowboys fan you are. So whether you're a diehard fan or a don't really care fan, a we got them next time fan or we'll never win again fan, a here for the tailgate fan or a first one through the gates fan, SeatGeek not only makes buying and selling tickets easier than ever before, they made just about everything else easier too. So whether you're a here every week fan or haven't been here in years fan, SeatGeek has you covered. Download the SeatGeek app today. SeatGeek, your ticket to great Dallas Cowboys seats. How's Wingstop sound? Crispy, juicy, classic wings. Made to order, cooked to perfection. And sauced and tossed in those 11 soul-satisfying flavors. Paired with hand-cut seasoned fries, house-made honey mustard, blue cheese, or signature Wingstop ranch. And, of course, spicy Cajun fried corn. I think you've heard enough. Get your flavor delivered at Wingstop.com. Back, back to Cowboys Storylines. 
What is up, Cowboys Storyline? I'm Nick Eatman here. We're getting the second half of the show. A lot of questions, a lot of calls, a lot of texts in here. I'm going to grab a text real quick here. This is from Chris from WF. I'm going to say that's Wichita Falls. I think he called the show last week. Could be Wake Forest, probably Wichita Falls. Uh, what is up, Chris? His question is, a little worried about linebacker. He said, with Overshone injured uh, for the season, the linebacker's depth chart looks thin. Could the team look for anyone else? You're always looking for other people, but just... Remember this about linebacker. And they play a 4-3. You don't just have you don't need six linebackers just because you play a 4-3 because the linebackers don't stay on the field that much. And they're gonna use J. Ron Kurth. When Donovan Wilson gets healthy, they're gonna use him some. I think Wanye Thomas is gonna get um um also um Marquise Bell. Forgot his name for a second. Um just those guys are they're gonna be playing a lot in there. So you you have your linebackers. Um, I don't think it's going to be that much of, a, of an issue. I think that they'll probably look for some help as you know from anybody if, if if you really need it. If there's an injury, but I think the way that Dan Quinn wants to play, they're going to probably go a little bit lighter there as far as size wise when they get to the nickel dime packages and, and really try to use more speed. There's so many running quarterbacks these days that and tight ends that that could really hurt you. I think they're more worried about that type of stuff than they are going up against guys, you know, trying to run the ball at them and and, and really hurting them that way. I think that's why you're going to see them go for speed more than size. All right, back to the phone line. Bob from Rio Grande Valley. Bob, what's up? Hey, Nick. Congratulations on the new show. Thank you. It's great. Thank you. I love the format. Thank you. Having fun with it. I bet I'm hi- I'm hyped about this year, cool. big time. Okay, I, I, I'm going to tell you why. First of all, I think we got a juggernaut for defense. That uh, mm-hmm. the uh, offensive coordinators that uh, we're going to be facing this year, uh, this defense that uh, uh, DQ has put together is just going to be an absolute nightmare. It's going to keep these guys up late, pulling their <laughs> hair out, trying to figure out how to stop it. Agreed. The, the offense, I am not concerned at all about our offense. It uh, many many times uh, under uh, Kellen Moore, we were so predictable because we didn't have the number of weapons on offense that we've got right now. This running back uh, situation uh, that we've got, we're in the best shape that we've been in in years. We've got a variety of, of just offensive power in so many ways that we can come at defenses. It, uh, I hope uh, that you agree with me, and I and. Uh, I'm looking forward yeah. to listening to your shows for the rest of the year, and I thank you very much for having me on. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate that. Uh, thanks for the call. Um, I definitely agree with you on the defense. I just think the defense is going to be is going to be outstanding and and has a chance to be the number one defense in in the league. They just have dynamic playmakers. You, you've got a cornerback who is really really good and one of the best cornerbacks in the league in Trayvon Diggs, and I think you have the o- overall best defensive player in Micah Parsons. So you got those two guys right there, and then you have a complement of other players. That's that's outstanding. I'm not there to say on running back, this is the best running back group that we, we've we seen since they've, you know, since you know, in a long time. I, I'm not there yet. I'm not worried about it so much, but I'm just saying we have not seen Tony Pollard as the starter all the time for a whole season. I'm not saying he can't do it. We just that's something he's never done. Even in high school and college, he didn't do that. Um, we, uh, Rico Daddle, we haven't seen a lot out of him um, on a consistent level. And then Deuce, you know, we know what we've seen in college. We just haven't. It hasn't happened yet in in the pros. I'm not betting against them. Um, so I think this is a this is a, a very athletic running back uh, room. But you know, and then you got in Hunter Lipke. Let's not forget he might be your short yardage back too. So it's it's got some promise. But I don't know just yet if if it's if I'm there to say this is the best running back group. But it's different than we've seen before, and sometimes different could be better. All right, we've got another phone call. I uh, forgot the name that we have on the line here, Chris. Who we got? Joe, how did I forget Joe in Stanford? My man, Joe, what's up? Hey, bro. So I have um, I've been doing mock drafts here the last few days, 
and Jake Ferguson keeps falling way down. Nobody's picking him. I have a feeling, this is just a feeling, that he's going to get a lot more targets than people anticipate just because Dak really likes his tight ends. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think so. Um, uh, tell me who else is uh, who else has fallen on the on the list there. You're talking fantasy football. So uh, who else who else is uh, what are, tell me what the other cowboy players are doing. What does the C D Lamb typically go? Uh, he's going in the second round of my mocks. I've, I have an eight-person eight, uh, team that I'm running, and he probably would go in the first in like 10 or 12-team uh, drafts, but I'm, I'm doing an eight-team league this year for mine, and he's he's going early second. Okay. TD is. Okay. So Tony Pollard's going late first, early second. Uh, those are the main guys. Uh, yeah. Um, it's uh, gonna- <laughs> It's going to be interesting, uh, Joe. Thanks, thanks for the call. Um, it's going to be interesting with with this group. We just talked about how many playmakers you you have, and that's what everyone's excited about. If you're playing fantasy football, it's not necessarily a great thing to have all these different options out there. Some games Gallup can have a big game. Some games he doesn't. Cooks same way. CD will probably get his catches, and Pollard will get his touches. As for Jake Ferguson, I think you're onto something there. I, I mean, he would be a guy that I I would like to have on the team. They they are going to have multiple tight ends, but I just have a feeling as well. I've said it all summer in training camp that I think Ferguson's going to be the guy. He's going to have maybe 50 catches or more, um, and, and he's, he's got sneaky athleticism that, that is, is going to get him down the field and, and make some plays. So Ferguson, you know, I don't – if you're in a 10, 12-team league, I mean, you got to have 12 tight ends out there. I mean, I think Ferguson's a guy that would be on, on some rosters – for fantasy football, and again, if you're into fantasy, that's fine, but really it's all about production, who's going to make plays, and everybody's excited about that. Going back to the phone lines, uh, we got another call here. Nope, no no call right now. I thought we had one. Oh, sorry, Nick Nick in North Carolina. Chris is, we got Chris Beam running crazy over here. Nick in North Carolina, what is up, man? Hey, just want to first say that I watched the War Stories 2 last night, and it was phenomenal. Awesome job by... Everyone, it was so Fa- fun to watch. Favorite story? What was your favorite? We had ten, ten uh, stories in that documentary. What was your favorite? I the the last one with Deuce there, wow. watching the the full thing with Jerry and them playing that little joke. That was that was awesome to see. So that's yeah, always nice when you get to draft your son. Um, True. So uh, and I just want to get to my question, and then yeah. I'll hang up and okay. absolutely listen. Um, so I think I can share it for a lot of the Cowboys fans who uh, definitely share a huge disdain for the Eagles. <laughs> um, but, you know, they are have a certain respect for them for, for what they've been doing. Um, so I just wanted to get your opinion on going in. I know it's a long season, a lot of unknowns, but how do you think they kind of stack up with the Eagles? Um, you know, they were champs and yeah. uh, division champs. So I just want to see uh, what you think. But uh, thank awesome okay. show. Can't wait to listen. Thank you. Appreciate that, Nick. Um, you're right. I mean, you know, you don't have to like the Eagles. I mean, you, if you're a Cowboy fan, you you do not. Um that's just that's just the way it goes, and, and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that, and and they certainly don't like the Cowboys. Uh, they make that really clear, um, and it is what it is. It, it's a it's a healthy rivalry, though. You 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 know it. You know it going in, and it, that's what makes it fun. Uh, college football is the same way. You know, we live right here in Dallas, and they play Oklahoma, you know, Texas game every year. And I'm sorry, people probably think it's called Texas Oklahoma. Either way, it, it, it's fun that, just to have rivalries like that, um, and it should be with with respect. And and I guarantee you that that the Cowboys are worried about you know playing the Eagles and vice versa. I mean, look at last year. Look, just look at it. Nobody beat the other team, you know, with with both quarterbacks playing in the game. Yeah, the Cowboys beat uh, Gardner Minshew and the Eagles beat Cooper Rush, you know, and both games were really close and competitive. And that's the way they're, they're going to be. I think the Eagles, the one thing to watch, maybe not this year as much as next year, but we're seeing it here. It's one thing to have a quarterback that's really good that's making a million dollars. When he's making fifty million a year, that cuts into the pie. Let's see how you pay the other guys and how the the, the team is structured. The Eagles have done a great job though with with their roster. Uh, they they draft well, so it, it's going to be a challenge. I think the Cowboys stack up with them. I think that there's three really good teams in the NFC, and I think Dallas and Philly are two of them. Obviously, San Francisco is as well. There's other teams that they'll definitely compete, but I think that's the the, the top tier right now. So we're going to find out how the Cowboys stack up with them. All right, back to the phone line again Philippe in France Philippe what is up hi Nick how you doing I'm doing great how are you uh, 
I'm fine. Uh, we're under heavy weather, but that doesn't matter. Uh, I would just call, I'm just calling because I love this um, new show. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, some riches will be uh, the future on the online. I want to, uh, I want, you, I'd like you to to explain, uh, to, to tell us what you saw, um, and uh, I don't have no uh, any worries about you pass blocking. Uh, I just looked at his uh, college dates, and he's not afraid to stick his nose mm -hmm. uh, in there, and he was successful. Thanks for taking my call. Take care. Keep the good job going. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. That that's uh he wins the award for the farthest uh to to call. Uh Philippe from fr France and uh I think the first part he was saying about awesome Richards um just excited about him and then also Deuce uh not afraid to block and and that's fine. Not afraid to block is one thing. Being able to do it is 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 another. He's going to have to to do it well. Um, and and sometimes with that, just getting in the way, you know, getting in the way and 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 not not you know making sure that there's a clear path uh, to your quarterback. But on the flip side of that is you know you can you can attack if you want to. I always remember the Eagles were really good at this back. 10, 12, 15 years ago with Brian Westbrook. He was a guy that, that teams thought they could blitz at him, and then he would, he would sneak around, and they would throw the ball over the, the blitzer's head, and then now he's, he's in the clear. So there's different ways to attack blitzers. Sometimes you have to get in there. Like you said, stick your nose in there. Sometimes you can use that to your advantage uh, as well. All right, um, I'd like to get another question here on the – um, on the text line, real, real quick before we go back to the phones, Mike in Houston, how does the emergency quarterback rule work on game day? You know, the Cowboys, it has changed uh, over, over the, this year, uh, and it happened because of the 49ers-Eagles NFC Championship game where they didn't have enough, if San Francisco didn't have enough quarterbacks. Uh, now, if you have a third quarterback on your roster, you he can be one of your – uh, game day active players, but instead of uh, instead of just 48 players, that he can be a 49th guy in uniform. Uh, the other two guys are going to have to be injured before he comes in the game. Um, but still, that's you could have three quarterbacks active. So there's no reason, really, as long as you keep three on your roster, there's no reason why you, you shouldn't have three quarterbacks ready and healthy to go. All right, back to the phone lines. We got Tony in Atlanta. What's up, man? Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. What's How you up? doing? Good morning to you. Uh, so, um, I'll, I'll be in New York. Uh, my wife and I are coming to New York for the game uh, next next weekend. So, uh, hopefully, we can bring back a victory. Right. Um, but uh, switching gears, right quick. Since I'm talking to the resident uh, Cowboys historian, <laughs> uh, we're we're about the same age, and uh, our history kind of dates together. So I've always kind of had an opinion, um, and I want to get yours. Okay. I had an opinion that when Parcells was hired. Uh, of course, that coincided with Emmett being cut. Uh, I always felt like Emmett could have been like Parcells, like O.J. Anderson. When he had him in the Giants, he came, and O.J. Anderson was great, and they won a Super Bowl and all that type of stuff. Obviously, this team wasn't going to win the Super Bowl, but I thought Emmett could have been that. But, of course, Emmett got cut. So, besides money, of course, why do you think Parcells didn't want Emmett? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that um... – to me, that's an easy, easy uh, question to answer there, and, and usually they're not. But in this particular case, and, and we pr appreciate the call, uh, Tony. Um, you know, when a new coach is coming in, especially a coach that has been this, the, this was the fourth team that he's been to, and he took over a Giants team in the '80s that was struggling, and obviously made them a, a powerhouse. New England was one of the worst teams and, you know, changed the culture there, got them in the Super Bowl. Jets, same way. Cowboys, same way. You have to change the culture. That's what you have to do. And I love Emmitt Smith. I, Emmitt Smith is one of my favorite players, and I think he's the most valuable player that they had on the triplets. They just didn't win without Emmitt Smith. Emmitt Smith, so I have all you know, respect for him. But at that time, you know, you got to remember, 2002, he had made the comment about I'm a diamond surrounded by trash. Maybe that was taken out of context. Maybe it wasn't. But 
you know, he he was kind of in a different way in his career. And I think they, they looked at this and Parcells was like, I've got to change the culture here. Um, I've got to have different different guys that are ready to go and to do it my way. Now, it wasn't every veteran. He loved what Darren Woodson was, was able to do and, and, and bought in. But, you know, Emmett had like 975 rushing yards, I think it was, in 2002. So that team was was not really very good. And he was he was at the kind of the end um, of his career. So I think all in all, it's not like he still had a lot left. Plus, it was it was better for Bill Parcells to kind of change the dynamic and go with different style of runners. That's kind of why he did it right there. All right. I don't hear another call. We are a little bit past our, our time. So um, this is a good time for us to wrap it up. Second second show in a row where we went overtime. But we had a ton of calls, and I tell you, it was so it was so much fun. I love talking to you guys. Uh, ten calls—is that what I just heard in my ear? Ten calls, and that—that's—that's that's amazing for a thirty-minute-ish show. Um, this is what I, I will be doing every day. So uh, starting next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Time, it's our new. It will be our new time, but that will be the time, and it'll be right in between. Really talking Cowboys and Cowboys break. So. Right there, you've got you've got you know a lot of a lot of um, a lot of knowledge. I would say in that three hour window, and then also in there um, on some days will be Mike McCarthy's uh, press conference. But we got a ton of shows. Uh, you know that that's just kind of the morning slate. We got it rolling all afternoon. Make sure that you. You tune in to uh, Hanging with the Boys with my man Shane and Gross there back uh, leading the, the charge, the Players Lounge, with the with the, the knowledge that you have there with, with uh, the, the guys that have done it, that, that have played, uh, Danny McRae, Barry Church, uh, and, and, and that group as well. Girls Talk, Boys Talk as well. And uh, as I'm rambling, talking, the phone line rings again. So, you know what, let's take one more call as well. Brian in Kansas City, this will be our last call of the day. Brian, Kansas City, what's going on? Hey, Nick, good to talk to you. So happy that you got the show and made it a fan show. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate that as well. Can you get some of that success that's going in Kansas City and kind of throw it this way and, and uh, you know, see if we the Cowboys can, can share in some of that? Well, I'll tell you what. Person for person, it seems like we have the same talent in Dallas. We just got to maybe shake off the, uh, the monkey on the back and, and get it going, but... No kidding. You play those two teams, and I don't know who wins the best out of three. Wow, that's I mean that's that's a, that's a good statement right there, you know. And I think Cowboy fans will take that right now. So, what's your question? You have a, you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to throw in a last question. You know, we we heard a lot about Micah and, and getting his uh, uh, training this summer and, and last spring and bulking up a little bit. What do you think? Is he is he on pace? What's the over under on twenty sacks? And I'll hang up and listen, brother. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, twenty sacks would be would be amazing for Micah to have that. Um, I it, it's it was tough to tell at training camp because you know this team has had some some issues on the offensive line. You know, Tyron didn't practice every time, and even when he does, I mean, he has he has problems with Micah Parsons, Terrence Steele working back in to practice. He didn't practice every day either. He also has problems. Then you can imagine. Well, let's go. Um, awesome Richards, Ball, Earl Bostic, whoever they threw out there at tackle. I mean, everyone's going to have some problems with with him. Now, um, how do they scheme him up? How, I mean, how does how our off, um, offense is going to scheme against Micah? That's going to be a big, big question mark. But when it comes to just able to rush off the edge, he seems like he is on another level this year than he was before, ready to go. Um, I, I'm, I'm really excited about him. And I think, you know, I... 20 sacks is just so hard to get. That just seems out it's so far out there. If you were to like, can he get, you know, that's still one a game and, and that's, that doesn't even get you there. So I think I've seen it happen with, with where I've never seen a guy go over 20. So I'm just going to say under to that because I think that they're going to have to, other guys are going to have to help with that. He can still be disruptive. I always say this, the term, the, the, the term horseshoes and hand grenades, you know, close only, only counts to those two. And I always have said, and pass rush. 
You should throw pass a pass rush in there as well because you could be close to the quarterback. You didn't get the sack, but you knocked them and the ball went you know four yards into the ground, and now they're having to punt. And you did your job. If it's a pressure, it wasn't a sack, but you can get close. And so I think that's going to happen. Uh, I think Mike is going to have an outstanding year. Um, we got a guy on the line. I don't want to just leave him hanging. I, I mean, so um, Costas is that right from from New Jersey? Yeah, it is. Thanks for taking the call. Sure. I, I actually met I actually met you once in Jersey. Oh, okay. Kind enough to say hello and stop for a second. Oh, cool, man. Um, so I have a back in the day question because we're so football stars. Me and my cowboy friends from up here were going back and discussing if there was one play in cowboy history oh. that you could change. Oh. What What would it be? Like, I'm stuck on the I need- second seat. I need three. Super Bowl. I need three plays. You get okay. You're you're stuck on the second Super Bowl. The second Steelers Super Bowl. Oh yeah, with Jackie Smith. Uh, yeah, the Jackie right. Smith game, but more than that, the bogus pass interference, right. uh, the non call in the end zone. Yeah. So I got what, three. What, what I, plays would you change? I got three, and 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 um, okay, and and you, the first one is the 1994 NFC Championship game. Uh, the Cowboys were down 21 to nothing, came back, and were fighting back into that game. They were down by 10, and Deion Sanders absolutely grabbed Michael Irvin's arm at the five-yard line. Uh, it should have been pass interference. Uh, it would have been first and goal in the five. Dallas will score, and it's going to be 38-35 to 35 with five minutes to go. That's what I want to see. I want to see what happened right then. If the Cowboys could have come back and won that game, it would have been unbelievable. They would have killed the Chargers in the Super Bowl. I just wanted to killed see. Them. I wanted to see that pass interference call on Deion Sanders, and then see what happens. The second play, I wanted. I mean, I want to see the the field goal go in in Seattle, um, the one that that Romo dropped the ball. And I, yeah. you know, now now this this goes the same with the with the third one. Obviously, Dez caught the football. There's no doubt he caught the ball. Um, what happens? The ball's on the one yard line. Do they score right away? Do they go for two and, and go up by three? Because you know they were down five. They're going to go for two if they score. It's still you got to stop Aaron Rodgers. So I haven't ever, yeah. I haven't ever really gotten too upset by that one because I just they probably weren't going to stop Aaron Rodgers. But well, there was four twenty two yeah. left in that game. That's what yeah. we come back to that. So let's see what. I, but, but those are the things. Those are the three I wanted to see what happened. There was still about. You know, four to five minutes in two games and about a minute in another one. You still had to stop them, but I wanted to see. Those three plays are the ones that just pop up. I love the question. I love the question. I'm probably missing some, but those those three for sure I, I would have I would have liked to, to seen uh, differently. The only other one we discussed was the Colt Super Bowl with the, the fumble that was overturned somehow. Yeah, I'm, that uh, one's a little shaky for me. I don't, I don't go f- that far back. I know that was the one. Halley was the MVP, and there were some weird things that happened. Yeah. Bob Lilly threw his helmet a hundred yards and all that stuff. I mean, every loss is going to have that. I mean, I, I can tell you one. If you're a little bit older, I can tell you a play that a lot of fans would say was the one where Drew Pearson caught the ball after the catch, Dwight Clark's catch. The Cowboys are driving. They're only oh. down one, and the guy horse collars. The horse collar. They don't call that. I mean, that wasn't a rule, but it was so close. Drew Pearson's breaking away. They get five, ten more yards in field goal range, probably to to win that game and go to the Super Bowl and probably crush the Bengals. So you know that's a that's another one too that I'm sure that old old school Cowboy fans would uh, would remember. And you know, there's the, the list goes on and on. You know, here's one more. I'll give you one more. Any yep. quarterback is going to fumble the ball when Jeff Heath comes flying off the edge and just smash yeah, Aaron Rodgers. If he fumbles that football, this is the 16th season and the, the divisional round. I mean, Jeff Heath's career is different. They fumble the ball. They get it. Dan Bailey makes that field goal. You know, the Cowboys go to the championship game. I can't believe Aaron Rodgers held on to the football. He did. And then, of course, he makes the throw on the sideline and – he does the Aaron Rodgers thing, but but um, yeah, those great seasons always end in in kind of a weird way, and so that's a really fun question. Well, sort of fun, not not fun to relive it all, but but um, good good question to to think about. And uh, as long as my producer Chris Beam is going to say another call, and I know he's getting hangry maybe over there, but if he wants to keep going, we're going to keep going. All right, we got another guy from Washington State. Was it Shane? Is that what I heard? Yes, sir. Sh- Hey, Nick, I just want to say the interaction with the fans on this show is 
second to none. This is awesome. You I love keep it. pounding them out. This is awesome. Yeah, I uh, agree. I agree. Actually, it's fun. It's fun for me as well. And this is this is what I love to do. I love to talk to you guys. When I see you guys on, on road trips and people or training camp, people stop and say, "Hey, what's up?" And questions like that make me go back and remember things. I mean, I, I absolutely love it. So, uh, what, what, I just want to, go ahead. Yeah, two, two two real quick ones. One was this Eagleton's idea? Was it yours on this new show? And how'd you feel about it? And the second one was, is I know Mozzie's a, uh, a run stuffer. That's what we got him. But don't you see him playing the three downs just to collapse that pocket to, to, for, for, for the, the guys on the outside to, to, to eat? I mean, I, yeah. I've been, I threw this question out a couple times. But I don't know if you answered it or not. But anyway, thank you so much for taking my call. Yeah, thank you. Um, the, the, to go back to the first part, I mean, kind of a, a collaboration of, of what we're doing, you know, just with these podcasts. I mean, we feel like, I don't know if mastered's the right word. I mean, has anybody ever mastered the 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 podcast? But I mean, like we've we've done it well with three people, four people. You know, we've we, we've done a pretty good job. We have six, seven, eight podcasts. You know, in this this format, which is a lot of fun too, to have different people talking and all that. Uh, we wanted to try something a, a little different, and so it was just it was just a kind of a, an idea that's been thrown out. Yeah, I would say like a year or two ago, um, and and this studio is actually just perfect for it now i'm not saying we wouldn't have done it before but i i think it's just it's just the, the perfect timing to do it we got a lot of people in a lot of the shows and so it, it's just something that we there was a brainstorming thing that's kind of been in the works and we said well, why not why not do it now so that's kind of what we've done and and um to go back to your mozzie question you know he, they have depth though i mean three three line three downs for him i mean he hasn't proven that he is the guy that you just can't take off the field i mean Aaron Donald at defensive tackle, J.J. Watt when when he played it, I mean guys like that, you're like, okay, he's got to be on the field. But but the rotation of with with him and Hankins and and Osa and Gallimore, you know, I I think it's it's important to to kind of keep that going there and until Mozzie or anybody gets to the point where they're just so dominant that that it's going to be hard to do that. But as for right now. You know, they, they have so many edge rushers that will probably slide inside. You know, like on third and nine, who's rushing in the past? you got Michael on one side. You're going to have – you might have a Sam Williams or a Dorrance Armstrong. They're going to put Tank inside. So that takes up some some of the, the downs and, and the rushing as well. So it, it, it's a fun problem to have is, is who stays on the field, who doesn't. If you've got that much talent – that's only a great thing for Dan Quinn and and people that 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 want to see this defense succeed. So, uh, all right, that is going that. Oh man, I tried to I say that's going to be the last call, but it wasn't. Isaac from Houston, what's up, man? Isaac. Hey Nick, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You're you're the third last caller of the show, <laughs> and I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna say that there won't be a fourth. But I, <laughs> what do you got, man? I'll be quick. Hey, just a question that I feel like draws from like the current team needs as well as just some of the history you have from the team. Um, if you could take one Cowboys all great from our history and plug them into our current team, uh, what player would you pick and why? So I, I think we got this call Did yes you? a couple Did days you? ago. Man, but, and, and I just and I just like kind of froze and I was like, Darren Woodson. I mean, he's yeah. my favorite player of all time and I think he can play in any era. And now – that's probably not the best answer, though, because the safety position is pretty strong. I mean, with you've got Hooker, Curse, uh, Donovan Wilson, and some of these young guys too. So I don't know if that's the right question. So let me let me think. Okay, the boy, you could easily you could easily take like a kicker, you know, of a, <laughs> and and just know that you've got like you know. 2012, 13, Dan Bailey. That's going to make all the kicks. Um, mm-hmm. That that would be one. Um, Chris Beam just said in my ear, always a good one. Larry Allen, I mean, he's going to he's move Tyler Smith to a tackle position or whatever, and Larry Allen, and now you got one of the strongest uh, groups of, of all time there. I, I, you know, I, there, there's so many good answers there. Um, you know, I'd take Jason Witten in his prime here at the tight end position. Just, just a guy that that could that you know is going to be able to get you first downs and 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 just be so solid in in every area. So. You know, I'm, I'm I'm taking Hall of Famers here, but that's kind of what what the the question is. What yeah. What about you? What What is your uh, What would be your answer to that? You know, actually, I think it'd be Larry Allen. Um, I feel like I, I feel like it plugs in with this team, though. Yeah. Like just offensive line. Again, we don't know. Like it could be great this year, but 
based on kind of what we feel like could happen and some history, like if you plug in a Larry Allen with Zach Martin, yeah. you've got centers, you've got like, it, it's just, it could, I feel like it could put this offense over the top. Who knows, you know, yeah. personalities and all that, but just, just hypothetically speaking, I would love to see a Larry Allen sure. plug into our line. Well, and, and, you know, that's, that's great to say and great to have, but, but, you know, Tyler Smith from a strength standpoint, He's not going to be benching 700 pounds, I don't think. But but I, I think he he's the strongest guy that they have there, and and he's he's young and he's smart and and so and athletic. Um, so those those traits right there. I mean, I'm not I'm not calling him the next Larry Allen, even though he wears yeah. 70, 73. But I do think that that he honors that number. He on he 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 respects the heck out of uh, Larry as, as a player and models his game to the point to maybe be that guy. So sure. um, that that's all that's exciting. I'm, you're definitely not going to put him in that category uh, yet at all. I mean, Zach Martin's trying to get into that category, and then he's trying to get into Zach Martin's. But still, um, if you can if you can get close to the L.A. Uh, you can get if you can if you can just be an Oxnard, you know, like that yeah. close to LA's level, that would be great enough for uh, Tyler Smith. That's so. fantastic. Thanks, Nick. I All right, it, man. thank you. That's gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Don't tell me another call. We're done. We went 20 minutes over, but it was absolutely fun. This was I thought Wednesday was my favorite show. This one tops it. If we can keep doing that, that's only gonna be uh, super great for for the fans, for me, for everyone. This is a really fun show. And, uh, and I love that you guys are a part of it. So have a great weekend. Be safe this holiday weekend. Watch some football. Get ready because this is the last one. This is the last one where your fingernails are going to be okay. After that, the season starts. I can't wait for it. All right. For Chris Beam, I'm Nick Eatman. Thanks to you guys. This was another edition of Cowboys Storyline. We will see you next Tuesday, 10 a.m. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!